Hi, this is Ryan from Acid Rain Technology, and in this video we're going to dig into Maestro's chain functionality. First we'll do an overview of how to navigate the chain menu, and we'll be applying that chain to channel 1. When I unmute channel 1 here, we can see it's a half note down ramp. Sounds like this. When you press chain, it enters the chain menu where you can select waveforms, either high, low, square, random, up ramp, down ramp, up down, and down up, in sequence to build a chain of waveforms that connect to each other. You can think of the waveform buttons as building blocks to create more complex waveforms. For example, up ramp, high, down ramp, low, up down creates a waveform that looks like this. Smooth up down, smooth random, down ramp, random makes one that looks like this. We'll start with a really simple chain. Say down ramp, low, down ramp, down ramp. Any channel button pressed before or during the chain menu will have that chain applied to it. If you press the chain button without pressing a channel button, it will prompt you to press a channel button to see if you want to apply the chain, or press the chain button again to exit the chain menu without applying the chain. This time we're going to apply the chain to channel 1. So I'm going to select channel 1, enter the chain menu, press down ramp, down ramp, low, down ramp, and because channel 1's already selected, I can just press chain and it'll apply it. Now we'll see on the oscilloscope in the corner here that there's a low spot in this chain. It's no longer just making half note down ramps. If you don't select any timing settings while you're building your chain, the chain will be played back at the channel's given timing. So that's currently a half note. We can change this to quarter, eighth, sixteenth, thirty second, triplet, really anything. Jamming live on the timing of even a simple chain can be a lot of fun. Channel 2 is triggering a 4 on the floor kick just to give a basic sense of the timing of what we're doing here. When it comes to synchronizing a chain with the rest of the channels on Maestro, it doesn't actually matter when you apply a chain. Maestro is always counting the number of clock pulses since the last reset and will place the chain so that the chain would have started at the reset. When you physically apply the chain, you can think of that as unveiling a chain that's already been properly aligned. While building a chain, a waveform can also have a specific timing setting applied to it. So I'm going to open up the chain menu, and this time we'll build a down ramp, down ramp, 1 16th note, down ramp, down ramp chain. I'm going to apply that to channel 1. So because channel 1 is on 1 16th right now, you don't really hear the chain because it's all 16th note down ramps. If we change that to 1 8th, we get kind of a syncopated feel because that 1 16th note down ramp that we applied the timing setting to is going to remain 1 16th no matter what the channel's timing settings are. This can lead to some really funky grooves. So far, we've been building some really simple chains using just the down ramp waveform and the fixed low waveform as a kind of space in the chain. The high waveform can also be used to create some really interesting morphing voltages. Let's create a new chain on channel 1 
and let's do high, down ramp, low, up down, and apply that chain. Let's also make channel one smooth. Smooth turns the waveform segments into sinusoid segments, so the high waveform blends into the low, which smoothly blends up and down into the up and down waveform. If we make this chain slower, I think it'll sound more interesting. The smooth waveform modifier can also be applied to a single waveform in a chain. So we can build a chain of smooth up ramp, up down, high, smooth down ramp. And when we apply that chain to channel one, it looks like this. Chains can also be triggered using the trigger and gate input in one-shot mode, which I'll cover in greater detail in another video. Let's patch this trigger output of the NerdSeq into the input of channel 1, and let's create a new chain on channel 1 to better see how this works. We'll do a down ramp, down ramp, low, up, down, and apply to channel 1. I've also molted the trigger into the other channel of the oscilloscope, so you can see how each waveform triggers only when the external trigger comes in. If we make the timing settings of channel 1 a little shorter, it's easier to see. This can create some really interesting grooves. There are so many ways to build chains and use them to modulate parameters in your system, and we can't wait to see what you do with them. Please let us know in the comments, tag us on Instagram, or send us an email and show us what you're making.